So we're going to talk about web apps for Ubuntu Touch, and this, this is going to assume... <laughs> Good. Okay. Yes. This is going to assume that you've um, maybe done a little bit of experimentation with them. Um, maybe you've used the web app creator. Maybe you've installed Clickable and just you set up the template for a regular web app, and which is what many people to do. They'll they'll download the um, web app creator and just submit a web app to the store. Uh, very low uh, entry point, but then you get web apps in the store that have all the permissions, everything just clicked. So this is going to tell you uh, what next. Um, my personal information. All right. Okay. I forgot to delete a slide. <laughs> it's good. So why web apps? Uh, many websites are designed to look and feel like apps already. They work across different browsers. It, they just work. Um, so it gives you, a, the web app gives you a way to run these websites in a container and that looks looks and feels like a native app. Um, so we're going to talk about some of the flags, some of the integrations that you can use specifically in Ubuntu Touch, and then maybe talk about some of the limitations. Um, currently on Ubuntu Touch, you can use the default container, which is great. You just specify a website, and it basically works. Um, and then a lot of developers want to get a little bit uh, more interesting, maybe make a toolbar that will then access buttons that are currently on the site, um, or dif use different um, uh, scripts to maybe resize desktop content that normally doesn't look right in a web browser, but they, they provide their service to a desktop browser and it works. So you can do some tweaking and make it fit. Um, all right, so on the web app container, in the desktop file, you have the exact line and this enables you to run uh, many different flags on the desktop file. Um, so we're going to look at some of those. Uh, maybe if you're not familiar with the format, this is a, this is a desktop file. Um, and this tells um, what it exe executes. And also the splash screen startup, the icon, the um, do you want it locked to an orientation? You can do a lot of crazy things. So back to the flags. Um, you get to add these to your web app if you need full screen. Um, that's an important one. Um, let's see. Now, a lot of these things, like the account, um, in practice, using the system accounts, um, doesn't always work. <laughs> and if it did, it was with Google's account. So, if you want to mess around with that, give it a try, see if it works. But in in practice, I've I've never really gotten it to work. So a uh, very important one is a user agent string. 
this you can um, use a desktop string and, and tell the phone to load the desktop site. Very useful for sites that assume you're on an Android device and then display you a um, open the Play Store for the app, which is funny when you're on an Ubuntu phone. <laughs> so you're like, um, okay, now what? But with this, you can get to their desktop site and use it just as if it was a regular computer, the, the caveat being the scaling. Uh, let's see. You also have the ability to use a uh, minimal address bar, or you can disable that and have a um, full screen experience. Um, many of these things have very specific usage. Um, so if you find you need them, look them up. Otherwise, you can safely ignore most of these. All right, in the app farmer file, um, if you've seen in, in your own speech setting up an app, this is the file that tells your, your app what hardware access it gets. Um, without these, um, without networking, it can't access the internet. With, so that one is a necessity for a web app because it's a web page. Um, <laughs> but also um, access to keep display on. Video sites like YouTube, um, if you start playing a video, you can, um, it, it will request that the screen stays on while you're watching the video. Um, otherwise, it would go to sleep after the set amount of time right in the middle of your video. Um, microphone, location. So it, it's a, safe to say use the, the, the bare minimum of what you need. If, if your site doesn't, isn't a map, turn off location and it won't have access to track your location then, which is a really good thing. Um, at least not with the normal GPS. So, <laughs> all right. Um, back to the desktop file. Um, it has a lot of options to make your web app look and feel more like it's a part of the system or more like that official app. If you throw it up there without doing a little bit of design work, People are like, oh, you know, it, it doesn't look so good. So, or if you go overboard, it looks crazy. <laughs> so, um, pick your colors, the icon, and, and make it look nice. User agent strings, uh, very important. You can go to, there are many websites that just list these. So it, it's not a complicated thing to find, but just look up the browser you want it to act like. And if it's a mobile or desktop string, you can find a lot of these online, just copy and paste. Um, an interesting tip is try and maybe find, um, the, the Microsoft mobile user agent string because if you're lucky it might not bug you about downloading an Android app. <laughs> All right. Uh, am I still on? Okay. Another thing you can do is uh, use URLs to open in your web app instead of the browser, you can make these files and define that you want URLs to be this file. And then you just define the protocol and the domain you want it to open. 
And then the URL dispatcher will recognize that this web app wants to open the YouTube URLs. And you click a YouTube link in the browser, or well, you click a YouTube link and it redirects it to your web app, making it feel more like an app. Very useful. Custom containers. So we're going to talk about a little bit about custom containers. Um, with custom containers, you can um, you're pretty make much making your own okay, your own QML file that then loads um, the Qt web engine yourself. You're basically making your own browser. Um, now people have made uh, example apps of this, and you can use that and just change the website. Um, highly recommended. But then you can make your own UI. Um, and some of the, the pluses is maybe they wrote the interactions a little bit better. Um, and you can also have access to uh, user scripts with Qt Web Engine and redefine the website. So um, I can put links up if you want for a couple different um, containers people have done. All right, so limitations. Oh, is that screen two? All right. Um, we have some uh, questions or discussions about some of the limitations, or even questions. Yeah. What do you think is the advantage of using Web App Creator against this, or is this compatible? This is uh, pretty much um, after you've used Web App Creator to make your app, um, some of the options you can change on the in the files that might not um, be exposed graphically, or maybe they are, and you didn't know what that checkbox did. <laughs> If I can ask another one, are there yeah. are there any plans to um, to include that in Web App Creator as well? That you can maybe like uh, customize it further if you did a first try and then still do that in the same UI. UI? Yes, there there are lots of plans um, and not a lot of time to develop them. <laughs> but I know that um, I've been planning possibly selecting different UI types. Um, like some people like the pull-up circle menu. There's um, ways to do that circular Android-style button that gives you a menu, or just a plain header bar with a couple of buttons. Um, that would be something we would like to implement where you can um, choose your UI, choose the buttons, and then uh, give it a function within a graphical. Right now, more, it's all manual. <laughs> more questions? OK. Thank you, Matthew. A big.